Hello, today we'll look at the treatment of hypocalcemia. Hypocalcemia means a low level of calcium in the blood. And the treatment can be divided into two groups. We have those that are treated with intravenous fluid, that means you get infusion into your vein, or those that are treated orally, that is you get, an, you get a medication orally. So these two groups, intravenous or uh, oral, and who gets what? That's the question. Those that have symptoms of hypocalcemia, I will not mention all of them because I made another video about symptoms, but those that are related to tetany, carpopedal spasms and seizures, these are the three main groups, tetany, carpopedal spasms and seizures. If you get any of these symptoms or other symptoms that I dealt in the other video, then you need to treat this with intravenous fluid. That was symptoms. What about patients who do, do not have any symptoms? Those will, those will be treated with oral medication, but, a big but, those who have no symptoms, but they have a, a sudden, sudden decrease of calcium, so a sudden hypocalcemia of less than 0.8 millimole per liter of free ionized calcium, it's important that I say free ionized, not total calcium, less than 0.8 millimole per liter of free ionized calcium, those will also get intravenous uh, infusion. And also those patients who we see on the ECG, we'll put electrodes here and we see in ECG that we have a QT prolongation. So these three types of patients, those with symptoms, those with no symptoms but they have a sudden drop, an acute drop of 0.8 less than 0.8 millimole per liter of free ionized calcium and those who have a, a QT prolongation. What about the patient who do not have any symptoms and they have not a sudden decrease, which means that they have more than 0.8 millimole per liter of free ionized calcium. These will be treated orally. And orally, this means that we will give, for example, calcium carbonate. Calcium carbonate, we will give around uh, 1,500 milligram of calcium, of elemental calcium. It's a very, uh, inter uh, very important distinction here. Calcium carbonate contain not only calcium, it contains also carbonate and other stuff, which means that the real calcium, is, what do we call? We, we call it elemental calcium. So the real calcium is 40% uh, of the calcium carbonate, so it's less. So if you say that. Uh, we will give this patient 3,750 milligram of calcium carbonate daily. Then we give this patient actually 1,500 milligram of elemental calcium. And that is the normal level. What about the intravenous infusion? Here we give something else. We give one gram of not calcium carbonate, but calcium gluconate. So this is the difference. In intravenous, you give gluconate, calcium gluconate. And the same thing here. One gram, which is 1,000 milligram of calcium gluconate, does not mean that we give 1,000 milligram of elemental calcium. It only contains actually 90 milligram of elemental calcium. So we, we put one gram of calcium uh, gluconate, which is 90 milligram of cal elemental calcium, and we put it into 50 milliliter of fluid, and the fluid needs to be needs to contain 5% of glucose so 5% of dextrose solution we call it and we will give this in 10 minutes okay so once again 1 gram of calcium gluconate which is put into 50 milliliter of 5% dextrose and when you give it in 10 minutes why because we need to increase the calcium level quickly because we don't want tetany we don't want seizures or any type of carpopedal spasms. And therefore we need to give it quickly in 10 minutes. But please don't give it too quickly. If you give it too quickly, if you give more than 90 milligram in 10 minutes, then it can be very dangerous because you can actually get a systolic arrest, which means that the heart can stop working. So please watch out of giving too, uh, too quickly, too fast, uh, too high amount of calcium. Okay, what about uh, the calcium level now it will be increased around three hours and then what some patients will have then a stable calcium level which means that we can we can stop this intravenous thing totally we will put this patient on a oral tablet form instead 
What about those patients that after these three hours then will have still uh, persistent hypocalcemia, we call it. So persistently low level of calcium. Then we need to put a slow continuous inf infusion of calcium. And what, uh, how do we prepare this? This infusion needs to contain one milligram of elemental calcium per kilogram of body weight per hour. That's the speed that we will give. That's the slow infusion. How do we prepare this? Let's put some calcium gluconate. And as we said, calcium gluconate, 1000 milligram contained 90 milligram of elemental calcium. We want now to put 11 gram of calcium gluconate, 11 gram, that only contains 1000 milligram of elemental calcium. Okay, so now that we have 1000 milligram of elemental calcium, we put this into 1000 milliliter of, inf of infusion solution. And thereby, we will now, and, and this infusion solution contains this 5% dextrose. Okay, and, th and that means that we have 1000 milligram, milligram of elemental calcium in 1000 milliliter of infusion, which means that we have 1 milligram per milliliter. 1 milligram per milliliter. Good. Now let's calculate the, the rate. So let's take a patient who is 80 kilogram large. And we said that we, we gave one milligram per kilogram. So we will give them 80 milligram in one hour. That's the speed, 80 milligram in one hour. How many milliliter of fluid do we put then in one hour? Because this is 80 milligram in one hour. And we said that we had one milligram in one milliliter. Okay, because that was what we prepared. We prepared 1000 milligram of calcium and we put it into 1000 milliliter infusion. We have now one milligram per milliliter and we need an 80 milligram per hour speed. That means that we need 80 milliliter per hour speed. And that, that is what we can put into, for example, a, a perfuser, so an infusion pump. So we put 80, millil 80 milliliter per hour for an 80 kilogram large patient. If he is 50, then we put 50 milliliter. Good. That was intravenous. And then we monitor, we check the calcium level every four hours in intravenously. When we're dealing with oral medications, with what we said about those who don't have any symptoms. These, we only need to check the calcium, for example, every week. So it's not, you don't need, you don't need to check that so often. And if, and if there were, after one week, the calcium is stable, then we can check it every three months. But if not, if the calcium level after one week is still high, then please increase the dose and then check it one week later. If the level is still low, then please raise the level again. Of course, there's a limit of how much you can raise. And if you reach that limit, then you need to switch from oral medication to intravenous instead. So the, the, the way to understand it is that when the patient is stable on intravenous calcium, then we switch to oral. When the patient does, uh, we, we don't reach the normal level of calcium with oral medication, then we need to switch to intravenous. That's, that's the relationship. And please, every time when we think of hypocalcemia, we need to also think of hypomagnesemia, which is a low level of magnesium. Why? Because magne low level of magnesium can cause a low level of calcium. So please, before starting any of these things that I said, start with treating the magnesium insta instead. Because then suddenly the calcium will be normal again, just by, uh, just by treating the ma uh, hypomagnesemia. Okay? And the same uh, goes with vitamin D deficiency. If the vitamin D is low, then please, the vitamin, please treat vitamin D deficiency with, for example, calcitriol. Calcitriol is a medication or is actually an active form of vitamin D. We give around 0.5 microgram daily of vitamin D, the active form, calcitriol. Because we, why do I say active? Because, for example, when you have sunlight, you create vitamin D in your skin, but that's not active. That needs to be converted in the kidney and in the liver to become active. 
But if you take calcitriol, which is already active, you don't need to you don't need to convert it in the liver and kidney. And why is this important? If, for example, the patient has kidney disease or liver disease, that means that the kidney or the liver cannot convert the vitamin D into an active form, which means that the patient can never get a good vitamin D level because he has kidney disease or liver disease. And therefore, you need to give a calcitriol directly. But of course, if the patient does have, does have a normal level, a normal kidney or normal liver, then you can give regular vitamin D. And what's the difference? Vitamin D is cheaper than active vitamin D, which is calcitriol. But the disadvantage, of course, is that it's slower and you need to convert it and so on. So calcitriol is better because it's faster. It takes only a couple of hours and then you have a, a, a nice vitamin D level. Good. So to, to recap now, I want to say um, that we need to divide the patient into two groups, intravenous and oral. Intravenous, those, are, uh, those who are treated with intravenous gluconate are those who have symptoms or those who have no symptoms but the drop in calcium was very fast, less than 0.8 millimol per liter of free ionized calcium or the patient uh, had an, on the ECG a prolonged QT. And those who are treated oral or those who did not have any symptoms, the level was more than 0.8 millimol per liter and these were chronic type, which means that uh, the patient had this hypocalcemia for a very long, long period, then we treated with um, oral tablets and or this was this calcium carbonate 3750 milligram daily divided into for example three times daily. This means that the elemental calcium is 1500 milligram and you just increase the dose until you reach it. So you check it weekly, okay? And whenever you see that it's not possible, then switch to intravenous. That was, that was uh, oral. Uh, and uh, the intravenous here, we had this uh, quick, in 10 minutes, you need to give one gram of calcium gluconate, which contains only 90 milligram of elemental calcium. And you put this into 50 milliliter of 5% dextrose and you give it in, 20, in 10 minutes quickly. Then you check the calcium level after, for example, three, four hours. And then after four hours, you see that the calcium is still low. Then you start the slow infusion. In the slow infusion, we need to uh, prepare this. You will put 11 gram of calcium gluconate, which contains one gram of elemental calcium, which is 1000 milligram of elemental calcium. This 1000 milligram of elemental calcium is put into 1000 milliliter of infusion, which is 5% dextrose. This will then make an infusion, which is one milligram per milliliter. And as we said, the rate that we use is one milligram per kilogram per hour, which means that if the patient is 50, kilo, 50 kilogram, then you will give 50 milligram per hour. And since the infusion that we prepared is one milligram per milliliter, that means that we need to give 50 milliliter per hour because the patient was 50 kilogram, because we then need to give 50 milligram, which means that we will give a 50 milliliter per hour speed. Good. And uh, uh, I want to just highlight two things that you need to watch out. If the patient is taking anything in the medication that uh, is related to digoxin and the digoxin, then you need to watch out because this can cause a very tox toxic uh, um, chemical reaction. So please, uh, these two medications, uh, dig uh, digoxin and calcium is not really good together. And the other thing that B-carbonate is the same thing and with phosphate also. Please don't give B-carbonate or phosphate into the same vein. If you really has to, you have to give it, then please put this uh, B-carbonate or phosphate in the other vein. For example, in the other arm. So you put calcium here and then you put phosphate or B-carbonate here. Good. I thank you very much for listening.